fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. This faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am still there. Stella Bender owned the Rock Hill Cafe, and she ran it with a heavy hand. Stella was as tough as any man, and just as quick with a gun. One day in her office at the cafe, she was talking to two of her hired men. Jack, I sent for you and Wes because there's something important I have to talk over with you. Sure, Stell. What's on your mind? We thought it must be important since you had us come here to the cafe. My brother Frank smuggled out a letter from prison. I'll read it to you. Listen. Mm -hmm. Dear Stell, I'm getting out of here in a few days. My sentence was shortened because of good behavior. I'll head for your place and should get there sometime Monday. Well, that's today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he goes on to say, while in prison, I met an hombre who was with your husband's gang. He gave me a line on the man to blame for the gang's capture and for the hanging of your husband, Tex. When I arrive, we'll make plans for pulling a few jobs and forgetting the hombre I heard about. Be seeing you, Frank. You've waited a long time to find out who sent your husband to the gallows. I sure have, Wes. I swore I'd get even if I ever found out who it was. And when Frank gets here, I'll know for sure. Well, I'm glad Frank's coming. We need another good gunslinger. We're getting rusty sitting around, and all of us could use some ready cash. You're right. So how about lining up a job or two, boss? Keep your shirt on, Jack. We had to lay low for a while. That last stage holdup you boys pulled caused a ruckus around here because of that guy who was killed. I've warned you time and again not to get careless with your shooting iron. It was a guard's own fault, Stell. After we stopped the stage, the fool went for his gun. Well, it's done, and that's that. Hi, Stell. Frank! We were just talking about you. Meet two of my gang, Jack and Wes. Hiya, well, hey, Jack. I know you, Wes. It's sure good to see you again, Frank. Sit down and be comfortable. Yeah, it's good to be free again. Prison life is pretty tough. Yeah, I reckon it is. I just read your letter to the boys, Frank. I'm anxious to know who the hombre is that sent text to the gallows. It took me a long time to find out. I still don't know his real name. What do you mean? In your letter, you well, said Well, listen that... a minute. His real name doesn't matter. He's a tall hombre who wears a black mask, rides a big white stallion, and is known as the Lone Ranger. So it was a no-good owl who... Hold on, that isn't right. Hombre I mentioned isn't an outlaw. 
Said he wears a mask, didn't you? Yeah, but he works on the side of the law still. Well, that doesn't make sense. Well, maybe not. But that hombre's put plenty of outlaws behind bars from what I heard. Well, doesn't he always work alone? No, I understand he has an Indian friend who rides with him. Indian rides a paint horse. Now all we gotta do is to locate that masked hombre and the Indian. Maybe we can make them come to us. How? I was told the Lone Ranger and his Indian friend head for any place where an outlaw gang is very active. Well? Now look, Stell. You've taken over where your husband Tex left off. You're able to line up jobs, give the boys a good hideout. To be a gang leader who won't create suspicion. That's right. right. Sure. All right, I'll join with the gang. We'll pull a lot of jobs, one after the other. Like rustling a few cattle, stopping a stage, even holding up your own cafe some night. The news will spread, and those two hombres most likely will come snooping down here to trail the gang. Mm. Maybe it'll work. But I want you to make sure the boys mask their faces with their handkerchiefs so folks won't be able to identify any of them. I'll make sure of that. Good. I'll let you handle a few jobs, Frank. But all of you take orders from me, Savvy. Yeah, of course, of course. From now on, those two hombres are marked for death. And I won't give up until they're done for. Where does the rest of the gang hang out? We bought a small farm in Jack's name. They stay out there. Nobody connects me with them. Now let's get our horses and leave by the back way for the farm so we can make plans. <laughs> During the next two weeks, things began to happen in the vicinity of Rock Hill. The gang struck time and time again. The first job was stealing cattle one night from a nearby ranch. A lone cow hand was riding the range. Hey, what the ho, ho, boy, ho, ho there, ho. May I start, Lord? All right, get off your horse. Uh, sure, just as you say. He's... I keep him covered, man. Right, right. I'll take your gun. No, I'll use it like this. Yep. Oh. Yeah, he's knocked out. Now let's get some of those cattle. Get him back. Get him. Two days later, an express right. stage Gentlemen. was held up. Come on. Oh, holy Moses, a hold up. Whoa! Oh, Whoa! Oh, Whoa! Oh, Whoa! Whoa! Get the money box while we keep them covered, Wes. All right, Kenny. Toss down that money box. Sure, sure. All right, driver. Get that stage out of here pronto before we plug you. Yes, sir. Get up! Get up! And it was only a few days after that when Stella's own cafe was raided. Mashed out hoots. Yeah, six of them. You're all covered. Keep reaching and line up over the other don't, side. Don't Hurry up about it. Several days later, in response to a message from their friend the Padre, whose mission wasn't far from Rock Hill, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode the trail toward the vicinity where the gang was operating. The Lone Ranger was saying, According to the Padre, Tonto, an outlaw gang has been very active around Rock Hill. Ah. Seem like Sheriff can't get line on gang. I hope we have better luck. Gang leader, he's smart to keep Posse from finding trail. He and his gang have plenty of nerve to pull so many jobs near the same place. Ah. They continue to pull jobs around Rock Hill. They're bound to get reckless and leave some clue that may trip them up. We're not far from Rock Hill now, Kimasabi. It's time we picked a campsite. Your eyes open for a suitable spot. Ah. Tonight I'll fix a disguise and we'll go into town. You may be able to find out something there. All right, let's hurry. Come on, Come on. Come on. That evening, the Lone Ranger carefully disguised his features so that he could go into town without his mask. Then he and Tonto left the camp. They left their horses in a grove and went to the cafe. The Lone Ranger, who now might pass for an ordinary cowpoke, sat alone at one of the tables having coffee. Tonto stood at the back of the cafe in the shadows. The Lone Ranger looked up as a figure stopped at his table, then sat down. Evening, stranger. Haven't seen you around town before. No, I reckon you haven't, ma'am. Just come to Rock Hill? That's right. Just sort of drifting through, you might say. Oh, looking for work, is that it? <laughs> well, now I'm not exactly hankering for it. 
But if it comes along and bumps into me, I might consider trying a hand at it. <laughs> you, you sure sound like a lazy drifter, all right. Uh, where do you call home when you're not avoiding work? Reckon you might say my saddle's my home, ma'am. Just another saddle tramp, seems like. Uh, you got cash to pay for what you order in here, haven't you? Uh, this ought to pay for the little I'll order in here. $20 gold piece. Say, you haven't haven't held up a bank, have you, mister? <laughs> Not recently. Say, who are you, a lady chef? <laughs> That's a good one. Nope, I'm Stella Bender. I own this cafe. Well, now, that's sure something. You must have a good head for business, ma'am. Some folks think so. Um, you're mighty wiry and muscular looking, mister. Like as if you could handle yourself well in a fight. It's right nice of you to say so, Miss Bender. I'm not much of a one to go stirring up a fight, but if I get into one, I manage to do all right if I do say so myself. Now, let me give you a tip, stranger. The sheriff here in Rock Hill is kind of suspicious of newcomers these days. Outlaws have been raising a ruckus hereabouts lately. <laughs> uh, thanks for telling me. I'll just keep out of the sheriff's way so as not to upset him. <laughs> Say, you're all right. I reckon I'm safe in saying you're not one of that outlaw gang, huh? Ma'am, I'd be a downright loco fool if I let you think anything else, regardless. Mm, you sure do come up with the right answers. If you were one of that gang, you'd be a fool to tell me, like you say. Well, now, don't get nervous wondering about it. Well, <laughs> me? Get nervous? Mister, you don't know Stella Bender. Them outlaws don't upset you any, is that it? Uh, here in this cafe was held up not long ago by an outlaw gang. Where'd you hear about that? Oh, up Pecos Way. News travels fast, you know. Yep, it sure does. Like you heard, a gang did hold up my cafe not long ago. Lucky for me, they didn't get to the office safe, though. Just robbed the customers. You were mighty lucky at that. Say, uh, tell me something. Since you get around the territory a lot, have you ever come across a masked hombre riding a white stallion and an Indian riding a pate? Uh, come to think of it, I do know about those two hombres, ma'am. Of course, I never came face to face with the masked man you speak of. Maybe it's a good thing you didn't. That is, if you are slightly outside the law. <laughs> I might say I've had word at times that one sheriff or another was hankering for my company. Hmm. What you just said gives me an idea, mister. Come on into my office a few minutes. Just as you say, Miss Bender. I'm Mrs. Bender, a widow. Let's get going. As Stella and the Lone Ranger, disguised as a cowpoke, walked toward her office... Toto, catching a signal from the Lone Ranger, turned and eased out the back door. Stella opened the office door. Go on in. Thanks. What's your name, stranger? You might just call me Tex. Tex. That was my husband's name. Uh, how would you like an easy job, Tex? Uh, doing what, Mrs. Bender? Just roaming around and keeping your eyes open. <laughs> you mean you're going to pay me for doing only that? Yeah, and I'll pay you well. Uh, what am I supposed to see while I'm a-looking? Right around the vicinity every day. Stick around the cafe at night. And the minute you see a masked hombre on a white stallion and an Indian on a paint, let me know pronto. Why are you interested in them? Hex, I'll tell you only this much. That masked man and Indian are both marked for death. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue. After talking to the Lone Ranger, whom she supposed to be a wandering cowpoke, Stella Bender decided she could trust him. Taking him into her office, she offered him the job of watching for a masked man and Indian. She told the Lone Ranger they were marked for death. Leaving Stella's office, the Lone Ranger met Tonto in the shadows outside. Why are you going office, Kimasevi? The woman who owns the cafe gave me a job, Tonto. Very unusual job at that. What kind of job? <laughs> and to keep my eyes open for two men who are marked for death. A masked man and an Indian. Oh. <laughs> that mean us. <laughs> that plenty good job. Right. Uh, but me not savvy. And neither do I. I'm going to find out. I'll have to work alone, Tonto. We mustn't be seen together. We'll uh, go to the grove and get the horses. Then we'll separate for the time being. All right, let's go. Uh -huh. The two men walked in silence to the grove on the edge of town where they had left Silver and Scout. As they approached the horses... Otto, I've been thinking. Uh -huh. First, if I ride Silver or leave him hitched in town, someone may recognize him. That's right. You come to camp. We use berry juice and make brown patches on Silver. Then him look like paint. Berry juice come off easy with water. Good. That's what we'll do. Let's get started for camp right now. Later, I'll tell you what else I have in mind. Easy, steady, be Easy, Scott. Easy, fella. One silver. Get him up, Scott. By the light of a blazing campfire, the Lone Ranger and Tonto worked on silver until they were completely satisfied with the results. Yeah. Now no one knows. Let's him make plenty close look. I think you'll get by all right. Uh, what else do you think about, Kimasabi? Uh, just this. I'll go back and be seen around the cafe for a while tonight. Tomorrow I'll meet you here again. Mm, that good. Then tomorrow afternoon I'll take you back with me, Toto, and take you in to see Stella Bender with my gun at your back. And I'll tell her I captured you, but the masked man got away. Mm, that good idea. And we find out why I want Lone Ranger and Toto. Later, Stella and her brother Frank sat at a table in the cafe. Stella pointed as a man entered. That's the hombre I was telling you about, Frank. What makes you so sure you can trust him? I didn't tell him anything. If he locates the masked man in Indian and reports it to me, then I might let him meet the gang. Hey, Tex, come here. Sure. Sit Howdy, down, Tex. Well, thanks. Meet my brother, Frank. How are you, Tex? Howdy, Frank. Where you been? I expected to see you around here. Oh, I was just scouting around outside in case those hombres you mentioned were snooping in town. Stella was telling me she gave you a little job to do, Tex. <laughs> yep. Easy money, I'd say. Won't be hard to spot a masked man in the red skin. I suppose you figure on going so far as to bring him in to Stella at the point of a gun if you do see him, huh? Maybe I'll do just that, Frank. Can't always tell. From what I've heard, it'll take more than you to do it, partner. You know, what's bothering me is just what you intend to do with them if I do find them. Look, your job is to find them, not to ask questions, Tex. You locate them, we'll do the rest. <laughs> I'll do my best, ma'am. That's all I ask you to do. No use you hanging around any longer if you don't want to, Tex. See you in the morning. Good night. Good night, ma'am. After leaving the cafe, the Lone Ranger made sure he wasn't watched. Then he took a piece of paper and a pencil from his pocket and hastily wrote a note. He wrapped the note around a silver bullet, then went to the sheriff's office and entered. Well, stranger, what can I do for you? Howdy, Sheriff. I was asked to bring this note to you. Uh, let's see. Uh, bullet wrapped inside. Hey, what is this? What... Hold on, this is a silver bullet. Is that so? Great day. Well, let's see what the note says. Dear Sheriff, my Indian friend and I shall be in the office at the cafe at 2 o'clock tomorrow. I'd appreciate having you watch the place. And if Mrs. Bender should leave there with either Tonto or myself, or both, I suggest you and your deputies follow. The result may be surprising. You know who sent that note? Why, of course I do. The Padre at the mission said I might hear from that mass man. He's the hombre who sent you, isn't he? Yep, he sure is, Sheriff. Well, how come he trusts you so much, mister? <laughs> Reckon it's because I've known him a long time. Well, better be going now. So long, Sheriff. Sure. 
The next day, a little before two, the Lone Ranger, in his disguise as a cowpoke, entered Stella's office. He was holding a gun on Tonto. Get over yonder Indian and no trick, Savvy. Uh, me Savvy. Why, Thunder Stell, he did bring one of them. Here, I'll take his gun. Reckon this is one of the hombres you wanted. Found him camping out a ways. The masked man wasn't around. Anyway, we got the Indian. Yeah, and the masked man will follow his trail, and we'll have a trap waiting for him. Uh, you not trap Lone Ranger. You talk big now, Indian, but you'll get over that. Excuse me for butting in, ma'am, but it's risky to keep the Indian here and try to trap that mask hombre right at your office. Yeah, Texas right, Still. Remember, those two hombres are on the side of the law. We'll have to get them away from town. That's what I plan to do. My horse is saddled out back, and so is yours, Frank. We'll take the Indian out to the farm right now. Who reckon I'd better come along if there's a chance for a good fight, ma'am. I want to be in on the finish. All right, Tex, you can come along. Let's get going. Come on. About half an hour later, Stella and Frank, with a lone ranger in disguise and Tonto as a prisoner, arrived at the farm and entered the bunkhouse. Holy smoke, you got the Indian, didn't you? Yep, thanks to our new member, Tex. Meet Tex, boys. Yeah, right, glad to be Howdy, with fellas. Just what am I supposed to be a new member of, ma'am? Tex, from what you told me last night, I figured the law's been after you. So I figure an hombre like you'd like to join our gang. You mean these hombres are outlaws, huh? <laughs> they don't look like a bunch of preachers, do they? <laughs> I reckon that's the truth, all right. My brother Frank leads the gang when they do a job, but they take orders from me. Great day. Now, who'd have thought you were secretly the leader of an outlaw gang? That's sure a big surprise. Yeah, I reckon it is at that. I'm in a position to steer him to good jobs. Well, let's stop jabbering and decide what to do with the Indian. Tie him up until we get our hands on that lone ranger. Hey, let me tie him, ma'am. I'll fix him up plenty tight. All right, go ahead, Tex. Bring over some cord, Wes. All right. Here. Here it is. Thanks. Keep him covered, Frank. I'll have him tied in a jiffy. All right. Quickly and with seemingly hard effort, the Lone Ranger tied Tonto's hands behind his back. But unknown to the others, using a slip knot that could be easily loosened when necessary. Then placing Tonto on a bunk, the Lone Ranger tied his friend's feet the same way. There. That engine's well taken care of. Good. Now we'll just relax and wait for the masked man to show up. About half an hour later, a sudden storm broke, and for a short time, rain fell heavily. Yeah, this rain will wash away our trail still. Yeah. After the rain lets up, Tex will have to take us to where he found the Indian. We ought to find the masked man there. Yeah, but get rid of the Indian now. Then plug the masked man when we find him. Sounds like the storm's almost over now. The rain will be stopping. Good. Open the front door, Frank, and let some air in here. Stuff him. All right. Hey, Stell. Hmm? Come here. What's the matter, Frank? As Stella walked to the door, the others followed, including the Lone Ranger. Frank pointed at the waiting horses and spoke. Look at the horse Tex what? was riding. Do you see what I see? The Lone Ranger looked over their shoulders quickly. Then he knew things were coming to a head, for the heavy rain had washed the markings off silver. The spotted horse Tex was riding has turned into a white stallion. Yeah, just like the Lone Ranger uses. The markings on that stallion were faked. Mm. The rain washed him away. Tex will have some explaining to do right now. I get it. Tex is really the Lone Ranger. That must be it. All right, cover it, boys. As the outlaw swung around with guns drawn, the Lone Ranger's guns flashed into his hand. Hold it. He's different already. He is the Lone Ranger. We'll gun him and the Indian right now. Give it to them. Quiet. Oh, my, my wrist. He creased my wrist. Why, that yellow double crossing no good coyote shooting at a woman. You're a killer along with the rest. Don't let that sneaking polecat scare you. Gun him. You're five to his one. While the Lone Ranger was giving attention to Stella, the others had spread out. He realized he and Tonto were on the spot, but he was determined to go down fighting. Hold together, boys. Throw that. Come on. Come on. Drop those guns. Hey, what? what? We got you covered. Hey, the sheriff is behind us in the doorway. He's got his men with him. We're between two fires now. The Lone Ranger in front and the sheriff behind. That's right. Sheriff, get that hombre. He and the Indian are outlaws. I said drop those guns. You heard what the sheriff said. I'm dropping right. I don't know what this is all about. Stella but Bender can't... is leader of this outlaw gang, Sheriff. I was looking around in here and noticed an express company money box under that bunk over there. Uh, I'll go look. Oh, Thunder, here it is, Sheriff. 
Must be the one taken from the stage last week. I'm sure you can get plenty of proof once you start them talking, Sheriff. Why, this is all loco. I came out here with my brother Frank to talk to Jack there, who owns this farm, about buying him out. My brother will tell you we don't have any connection with this gang. Yeah, that's right. Now, wait a minute. You can't run out on us. Tell the truth, Stell. I'm Mrs. Bender to you, you half-baked bunch of cowhands. You can't tie me and Frank into this mess. Oh, yes, we can. Maybe they don't know you're the widow of Tex Bender, the outlaw leader, and that you took over where he left off. All right. right. I've heard enough. Well, let's get them back to town, men. Take Stella and her brother with them. We'll learn a lot more before we're through. All right. You, mister. Come on, coming without your mask and calling yourself Tex while you're drawled all over the place. I could rip you to pieces gladly. Sorry, ma'am, you won't have that pleasure. I'll uh, come to collect my wages someday for completing that easy job you gave me. I did bring in the hombres you wanted, you know. <laughs> Hello, have you slipped out of those cords? Uh, me ready to go. Me got gun back. Mister, whether I get out of this mess or not, I got friends who will hunt you down again. I'll be glad to meet your friends and send them to join you, Stella. Uh, Sheriff, Todd and I will go from here to the main trail. We're uh, heading south. And again, thanks for following the suggestion in my note. You arrived just in time. Well, thanks to you and the Indian for tricking Stella and the others. Seems like a woman is even slicker than a man when it comes to being outside the law. <laughs> Adios, Sheriff. Oh, gosh, Sheriff, you didn't tell me who that hombre is. Oh, what's the matter with you? Haven't you ever heard of the Lone Ranger? This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Brace Beamer.